welcome to the premiere episode of On the Couch. Uh, thank you for watching and for making us the longest running LGBTQ talk show in local history. That's quite nice. Uh, and at the same time, uh, allowing us to entertain you while we have lively, fun, and real conversations with artists and community creative people. Uh, and also we give platform to a lot of up and comers to tell us their stories and discover their talents. As you see, this is not our regular set uh, from Buddies in Bad Times Theater from last season. Uh, and I'm doing the show by myself without our usual uh, guest reporters. Um, in order to keep everyone safe, our guests, our team, our community. Um, so hopefully sooner than later, we'll be back at Buddies uh, filming in front of our live audience and on our usual mustard colored couch. Until then, I'm here at home and I've got my pup with me. This is Cowboy. Say hi, Cowboy. <laughs> so I am, let's get on with the show. I am so excited and I just can't hide it and I think I'm going to lose control, etc, etc. <laughs> uh, okay, why am I so excited? Because today on the show I have someone whom I fell in love with with the second that she flashed her big smile on this on the big screen and sang Good Morning Baltimore in the movie musical Hairspray uh, starring John Travolta, Michelle Pfeiffer, Queen Latifah, Christopher Walken, Zac Efron and a group of young bright stars. It was, but it was Nikki Blonsky, uh, my guest today, who um, the second that she appeared on the screen Mom and I in that dark movie theater uh, whispered, um, whispered because you can't speak loud in a movie theater. Wow. Since then, I am a huge fan of uh, the, the film and I usually throw on the Blu-ray whenever I'm feeling down, I need a bit of a pick me up, a bit of empowerment. It reminds me that we're able to do whatever we set our mind to, no matter the obstacles. Uh, recently, uh, Nikki had some big news, so why don't we bring her on and see what she's got to say. Hello, Nikki. <laughs> Welcome to Hello. the show. Hello. I know. Um, thank you for having me. Oh, uh, thank you for, for thank you for uh, uh, replying to my Instagram message. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you DM'd me. That's awesome. Uh, should we dive right in with the recent news of your coming out? Uh, yeah. What what can you share with us? The decision to come out, why now, the experience, and maybe the feels since then kind of thing. Uh, it was honestly a very spur of the moment decision. I had been talking about it with my team about how I had been wanting to come out and I just felt like it was time. And, uh, and then I was on my friend Alec Mappa's uh, show on his Instagram live show and I just decided it was it was that moment it was going to be this moment and not going to turn back and uh after that i made a tiktok my publicist and i made a tiktok <laughs> to diana ross's i'm coming out you know and, um, and we posted that and then i started getting questions saying is this real we don't believe it and i was like no no it's very real and so we were like maybe we should just put one more thing out there just so people really know like it's very true so that was when we put the graphic up on my instagram page and that was like the massive announcement and the response i got i was blown away i heard from not just wonderful people in the community itself like billy jean king and uh Dot Marie Jones and just such incredible supportive people in the community, but also friends and people that maybe I hadn't heard from in a really long time that just wanted to let me know that they supported me and uh, it meant a lot. It really did. That's wonderful. Where are your teammates from the from the movie? Did they message you? Yeah, I, well, Brittany Snow and I uh, spoke over Instagram. She left me a lovely com a lovely comment, and I did speak to John because I felt that. He was the one out of everybody who needed to know. You know, he played my mom, so he deserved to hear it from this mouth. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I operate uh, LGBT media in, in, in the region here, and that's the TikTok is 
the item that passed by my news desk, and I think I almost fell off my chair. I was like, no. <laughs> I know. Uh, so, uh, well, very happy for you. Uh, how are you feeling since then? Did you feel that you made the right decision? Oh, I know I made the right decision. Um, it's been, it's been. I know freeing is kind of a, a word that everybody uses, but it's also been really enlightening. I've learned a lot about myself, um, and I've become more fearless, I think, since coming out. Because I'm like, okay, well, all of me is out there now. Um, now there's nothing to hide. So if people like me, they like me. And if they don't, they don't. And you know what I mean? Like Wonderful feeling. I'm so happy for you. Awesome. Thank um, you. It's uh, been an uh, interesting journey. So, so, just sometimes it's challenging to come out. Sometimes it's easy. But it's always a very personal journey. What would you say to maybe a youth or an adult who is struggling with the decision to come out? What would you say to them? Well, I just had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day uh, because they were talking about how they came out in like their teens. And I said, well, for me, you know, you were in your teens. For me, I was 31. You know, for somebody, they may be 51, 61. I said, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's, it's a personal journey and it's your life and you have to do it when it's right for you and when it feels right. And it very much felt right for me. And so... I just went with it, um, but I think it's just about everybody finding their own path and making sure that they're staying true to themselves and doing it when it suits them. It's the right time. Beautiful. Beautifully said. On the topic of your singing and acting, yes. uh, when, how, um, uh, what got you starting in this? What got you to discover your talent? I started singing at the age of three, and I just remember it just, I felt something when I sang. Um, it was, I went to another place. It was like I wasn't, you know, it just, it felt magical to me singing. Um, it just felt right. So at the age of eight, I started vocally training and taking lessons, and then by the time I would say I was in high school, that's when I really got into opera and classical music and found my mentor dr levy and started training in you know serious musical theater and then that's when the hairspray audition came out nice um what do you enjoy about it what 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 what, what part of acting and singing for me acting is i think getting lost in another character and bringing somebody to light maybe somebody a new character that people don't know uh, if it's a new project a new movie maybe they don't know but it's my my chance to create a character that can you know make people feel a certain way or maybe bring a smile to their day or make them relate but then it's also fun to play characters like Tracy where you know these characters have been out there but you I got my chance to play her um, so I think yeah, that's what it's all about for me. It's just, it's getting a message across, and that's how I feel with singing. When I get up there and I sing, it's just, it's very much a bearing of my soul. Do you have somebody you look up to for both acting or singing? Oh, yes. My favorite actress ever, hands down, is Angela Lansbury. Nice. Good choice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sweeney Todd, <laughs> Mrs. Lovett. Is just magical to me. So I look up to her. I look up to Julie Andrews, Betty White. I look at, you know, women like that who have had these really long, illustrious careers that, you know, have stood the test of time. And I, that's kind of where I would love to play some days in the world of Bette Midler and Liza Minnelli. A girl can dream, right? Oh, come on. We, let's make a dream come, happen, <laughs> come true. Um, Let's talk about, let's have a good chat on hairspray. That's the big deal. <laughs> uh, for full transparency, I actually had doubts walking into the theater. Mom wanted to see John Travolta. I'm thinking, who dare replace Divine? And, and who did, dare replace the wonderful Ricky Lake? <laughs> no. Uh, but hey, it took like one second of you coming on the screen. It's like, okay, yeah, she's the one. <laughs> um, so um, did you have any doubts? Um, um, getting into the role, I mean, it's it's a, it's it's a big role to take on. I'm sure it was a lot of pressure. Uh, it was honestly, it was so much fun. I remember I've been a massive Ricky Lake fan my entire life. 
like ever since. So the Ricky Lake show, her talk show, was basically like the Corny Collins show for me in real life. I would rush home every day to watch Ricky. (laughs) I I was obsessed. I would literally sit in my living room and do the, go Ricky, go Ricky, the whole thing. Um, So to get to just meet her was just mind-blowing to me. But then to um, play a role that she originated and just shared with the world. If it wasn't for actresses like Ricky Lake, there would be no place for me in this industry. She very much paved the way. So I thank her every chance that I get. Uh, so you met her, you said. Yeah, we met. I met her. I remember walking into the makeup trailer one day, and they didn't tell me that she was on set. Uh-huh. And I, I opened the door. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning. And I saw her sitting there. She, I'll never forget. She was in like a, a green V-neck sweater. And I walked in and I looked at her and I went, <gasps> and I just, I shut the door and I turned around and I walked away. And one of the ADs was following me. He said, where are you going? I said, oh, no, 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 no. I can't do nope. that at four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, nope. I said, I can't do that right now. And he goes, oh, but you are. And uh, I met her and we've been literally like bonded ever since. Um, um, has life changed and, and career changed since that role? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, life as it's weird. I think it happened at a perfect time in my life because I was 17. So life as I knew it was going to be changing anyway, going to college. So I was very much ready for the next phase of my life. I had no idea and I couldn't have imagined that it would have been this uh, because it's just, it's so wild to me uh, just to, to have been such a fan growing up of Hairspray, uh, the Broadway show, and then to be able to play Tracy. It's truly been the greatest blessing of my life. I, every day I have to check myself. I'm like, it sounds kind of crazy, but this really did happen. So sweet. Um, what goes into making a big musical like this, especially like the show numbers? How, how intense is it? Oh my gosh. Well, Zac Efron used to say it was like a musical theater boot camp yeah. because we would go from like one room. I remember dancing for me. I would dance at least eight hours a day. Oh. Um, and then we'd go, and this was just rehearsals for two months. And then we started filming. Uh, we filmed for about six months. And it was it was intense. I never danced a day in my life before that movie, but we had so much fun. A lot goes into it. It's it was Harris. I have to say, it was one of the most beautifully well oiled sets I've ever worked on. Everything was just so smooth, and uh, it was a big moving operation. But somehow it managed to happen. It was it was really something special to watch, and everything from every scene and every set that was built for us it was just i'm still just in awe uh, that's why the movie is special well you're making you're making a fan like myself very very happy hearing all this um, well let's talk about a little bit dead bits um was john was john waters on set yes john waters was on set he came he played a scene where he played the flasher yeah, right. He's, he's in Good Morning Baltimore with me, and that was just so thrilling to work with him because without John Waters, that man birthed Hairspray. Without him, like we me, it. Ricky, none of us would have played this role. So um, that was just, that was incredible. I remember standing there and just looking up and going, okay, this is <laughs> this is a special day. Something's in the air today. You're here with like... Because he, he's just so brilliant. And, he is. He is. Uh, um, was John Travolta a good mother? <laughs> my gosh. I have to say, my mom is pretty amazing. My real mom. But John... Was a good mother. <laughs> neck and neck. Neck and neck. I mean, he filled those shoes. Uh, he seriously, though, I couldn't have been given a better person Wow. to be in my life, as, not just play my mom, but John has went above and beyond to show me and tell me 
and give me all of these wonderful pieces of advice that I carry through my career now. So he went above and beyond the call of a mom. You know, he's now my friend. I very much look at him as a mentor because I, I idolize him. He's one of my, I always say he's one of my top, like three favorite people alive. It's like John Travolta, my mentor, Dr. Levy, and then my mom and dad fight for the third spot. I'm a huge fan too. Uh, Grease is a big movie for me, Saturday Night Live, all those things. And honestly, he really, really did a great job in Hairspray. By, by that last big number uh, uh, with all of you, I, 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 he, I go crazy whenever he starts his, his, his lines. <laughs> I know. It was, it was so fun to be able to dance with him because I grew up watching Grease as well. And I mean, massive fan. So it was just an honor every day. Nice. Uh, was that Efron really dreamy? <laughs> So dreamy. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. I always tell everybody, I said, if I had a dime for every time I was asked what it was like to kiss Zac Efron. Um, <laughs> but I love him. He's, he's such a good guy. And we had such a blast making that film. What you saw, I mean, we were constantly laughing and joking. And he's he was he was the perfect person to go on a... 10 month world tour with. We had the That's time of our lives. With, with his career has really progressed beautifully. His, his, yeah, he's been doing some really good work. Um, Queen Latifah is a favorite of mine. We actually had her on the cover of one of our magazines. Uh, her character was very empowering. Uh, I imagine her being in life also kind and gentle and a strong woman. She is. Yes. <laughs> she is, well, she's somebody that I've looked up to, I mean, ever since I saw her. Um, you know, growing up, one of my favorite TV shows was Living Single. And I, I just remember Khadijah, that I loved her. That was my favorite character. And, uh, and then when I found out that I was going to be working with her, I also found her incredibly inspiring because she paved her own way yeah. in everything. She started in hip hop and now she has taken over acting and, you know, been an Oscar nominated films. I mean, I, so I, I find her so incredibly empowering and inspiring, but then to get to know her for just like the sweetest hearted woman in the world. I just, I love nothing more than to just to see her and give her the biggest hug in the world. Oh, nice. That's, nice. Hugging her is one of my favorite things. Thank you for this uh, going down memory lane with her spray. Not to, to mention everybody, uh, Nikki received praise for her performance. Uh, she got several awards nominations. Uh, she won the Critics' Choice Award for Best Actress, and she was nominated for Golden Globe for Best Actress as well for the movie. So, what happened since then? Karim, oh what, have you, what have you been up to? What's What's new? What do you want to share with us? What should people be watching for you? Well, so this, you know, this industry is interesting. And for a long time, I felt that there maybe weren't a lot of roles for plus size girls or for, you know, me. And I was like, well, I'm just going to start writing my own. So I've, I've started writing a couple of screenplays. I've started writing a book. Um, I started my podcast, which um, we've had some wonderful guests, everybody from David Burka to Lainey Kazan is coming up. And, um, awesome. <laughs> I love yeah, it. <laughs> it's been, it's been so fun. So this is a whole new avenue that I'm exploring in my life right now. I'm exploring writing, hosting, because I, you know, it's interesting. I had a singing teacher growing up who used to tell me, you can't be a one trick pony and you can't. And so I find it that in this business, it's really good to explore different avenues and try different things. And I've had the best time writing my book and being honest and just letting everybody in. So I can't wait for all that's come out. And I start a new a new project in the fall. So I'm ready to film. We're just waiting for everything to get up and running again. There's a film. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you want to tell us what it is? Okay. That's I wish I could, but when I can, <laughs> I'll come back. I promise. Please just message me and I'll get you back with for a chat about the film. Um, actually, everyone, if you look at, at Nikki's Instagram, you totally can tell that she keeps busy. She, I mean, you, you always have very exciting things happening and you get involved in many different charities, I see, and, and lots of things. Yeah, Yeah, I, I love working with different charities. Over the years I've worked, I one of my favorite charities that I worked 
work with is Shans, which is down in Gainesville, Florida. It's for kids, um, you know, against suicide and violence and how, you know, just implementing programs against bullying in schools. And so that's one of my favorite ones to work with. Um, and I know there's, I work also with Cameo. Uh, Cameo is a great personalized video uh, where you can get videos from me. You can go on Cameo.com. And this month, we're giving a portion of the proceeds to Baby to Baby to give back school supplies to kids that are, you know, going into school with COVID, with everything. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, we're going to get on a little bit of a serious topic. Speaking of social media, I was watching an interview with you from 2013 you did with Entertainment Tonight about being bullied online. Yeah. Uh, what is our thoughts on the blessing and curse of social media? So you're so right. Uh, social media is very much a double-edged sword. It puts us out there so we can talk to the people that either are friends or we can make uh, business connections, network, or just be a, a member of society. Everybody's on social media really now these days. However, it does put you out there um, and puts you in a spotlight and sometimes people who have platforms, it puts them in like a little more, you know, out there for everybody to scary. see. <laughs> it's very scary. And so I think with social media, it's the balance of doing what's right that's going to benefit for your work. But I think it's incredibly important to save certain things for yourself. That's how I, I choose to live my life. My personal life, I always choose to keep for me little things. Like, I'm never going to post what I'm eating for dinner because I don't think that's, you know, all that fascinating. Um, I don't want to take up your feed with that. But if it's something like an important message or, yeah, I think social media can be great. But at the same time, it's, it's like anything. When used correctly... Yeah. No, then yeah. it can be great. You sound like you learned that because maybe in 2013 it was still new, all of it. It was still new, and I think, you know, I have to tell you, I've been getting bullied since Hairspray. One of the first things that happened when I got oh, the part of Hairspray, the night that I got the part of Hairspray, my IMDb, there was a bunch of comments that said, why does the fat girl get to kiss Zac Efron? Oh, my God. And so I knew back then that the day when my life was at the highest and I just got this great role that I knew that whatever was going to come, there were always going to be naysayers and haters, but it's taking that negative energy that they put out and spinning it on the positive side of things and making it work for you. And I will always take a negative experience and make it learn from it, grow from it and find my way with it. You're going to make me tear, tear up a little bit. <laughs> no, I just, you know what? It's why would people tear each other down when we should be building each one another up? I don't know. You know, it's interesting. When I was a kid, my grandma used to say to me, people make fun of you because they're insecure with themselves. Fair and enough. it's true. And that's how I've had to look at it. When I get bullied, I actually have said to people, I feel so sorry that you feel that you have to do this to make yourself feel better. But if it makes you feel better to tear me down for five minutes, I'm strong enough to know in myself and confident in myself that it's not going to shake my day. So if it makes you feel better, knock yourself out. Yeah, I always, I always, I always say on social media, uh, and I tune out any posts that don't. Um, you, if, you, if you're going to speak about somebody, talk about their merits or actions or their heart, not about their look or their size or, or how skinny or how big they are. Or, um, you're ugly. You're ugly is not a, is not a criticism of somebody. Uh, tell me about, you know, I don't like your work. Be, be specific about why don't you like something. Exactly. You know, people say to me all the time, oh, you stopped working after Hairspray or where'd you go or your career's over. And I'm like, get original like i've heard all these before if you're gonna insult me do it right people <laughs> i'm just saying let's get into something a little nicer what inspires you in life what makes nikki happy oh my gosh oh inspires me in life music i i turn to music for everything um I, I used to have two pugs. They inspired me. They made me so happy. Oh. I love dogs. Um, I find I'm, I enjoy the simple things in life. When I'm I love you. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm a huge dog lover. I had two pugs. But for me, it's the simple things in life, whether it's going fishing or 
just relaxing. But at the same time, I also love the extreme things in life, like, you know, writing movies and doing, you know, silly things like that. And just that maybe seem intense, but to me, I just, that's what I thrive off of. I love a little pressure. Whatever, um, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> right. Yeah, I just, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think every day I find something new that makes me happy. Okay, well, on our show, uh, we like to know the artists and their work, but most importantly, we like to know the real person behind the artist. So let's talk about family and upbringing. Where from, you know, how was your childhood? Were you the, the class clown or the, or the A student? <laughs> or oh my gosh. <laughs> I was an interesting kid. Um, I gave my all in everything I did. So I went to Catholic school growing up and then like in fifth grade, I went to a public school because they had music and I just really wanted to sing. Um, but I played softball growing up. I was involved in everything. I was that girl that whenever they needed like the national anthem or God bless America for a parade, they called me. If it was a funeral and somebody needed a, a mass cantor, I was there. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how I spent my childhood. That, working at Cold Stone, doing my auditions. I was, it was interesting, when I went to the public high school, I was not the best student in the world. And then when I transferred to an alternative high school called the Village School, and we had such personalized, you know, the teachers just took a, such a different approach with us. And after that, I did walk out with straight A's. So I was happy to leave high school with straight A's, but leave it just there because, you know. Nice. Uh, where, where are you from? I'm originally from Long Island. So I grew up in a town called Great Neck, which is actually where the movie The Great Gatsby is set in. Oh, cool. Big yeah. family? No, it's kind of just the four of us. My mom, my dad. I have a 26-year-old brother who just turned 26. He just got engaged, so I just I will take this moment to congratulations, oh, congratulate <laughs> him and uh, his fiance Gina. Welcome to the family, Gina. I'm so happy to have you. A new sister, yeah. Um, when I posted on Facebook, uh, that I'm going to be talking to Nikki Blonsky, uh, a friend of mine in the LGBT connection, uh, uh, wrote, oh my God, I'm so excited you're chatting with her. I have a, a, a huge lesbian crush on Nikki. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You're going to make me blush now. Well, <laughs> hi. Uh, how is uh, how is your love life going? <laughs> oh my gosh. The love life. Thank you. No. <laughs> Um, they, you know, it's interesting, love life. Um, my love life has always been just different, even back in the day. Now it's, um, I'm single. I'm, I'm dating, um, you know. She's single. I'm, I'm single, you know, I'm open. I'm just, you know, I take life as it comes, and if somebody great comes along my way, then I'm totally open to it. She's gonna be thrilled that I even mentioned her on the show. Well, I'll help tell her I send my best. I'll, I'll, she'll, I'll, I'll, I'll be tagging her. Um, okay, so we end the show with a game of very quick questions, and you provide quick answers for whatever comes in mind to mind. Are you ready? Yes. Your favorite color? Purple. Your favorite season of the year? Oh, uh, fall. I was going to ask cat or dog person, but you have badly answered. <laughs> uh, your favorite vacation spot? Toronto. You serious? Yeah. Okay, let me know when you're next here. I'll take you out for dinner. <laughs> yes, uh, we filmed Hairspray in Toronto. It's my second home. Is any that, chance? Seriously? That's where we filmed here? Yeah. Any chance I, I get to go back. I That's my first know. option for, yeah. Awesome. Um, your uh, favorite cuisine to dine out? Ah, sushi. Okay. I, I love sushi. It's my top choice. Uh, you got friends coming over for dinner. It was a busy day. What was the fastest, most, de most delicious dish you can whip up really quickly? 
I, it would probably be my mom's casserole. It's like a big pasta dish. Nice. Uh, what album would you throw on for a romantic candlelit time at home with someone special? Oh my, what album? I don't know. That's a good one. I mean, it would probably be a playlist, but for some reason, I don't know. A whole, a whole album. Huh? Okay, so you don't have I mean, a my, It would probably, my playlist would definitely have some like Sinead O'Connor in there. There you go. Um, <laughs> you know, with like a little John Legend. Yeah. Beautiful. So, any last words to your fans and to the LGBTQ community? Well, I just want to thank everybody, every period, you know, for welcoming me into the, you know, the movie world 14 years ago and now for welcoming me into the LGBT community. I just thank you all for your love and support. And uh, you can keep up with me on Instagram and TikTok and uh, the real Nikki Blonsky on TikTok. But uh, like I said, cameos, I'm on there as well. And Nikki Nights is my podcast. It's on Spotify and YouTube. So I'd love for you all to check it out. Beautiful. Uh, well, I'm happy to get to know the lovely person behind Tracy Turnblad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone in the community and all our audience for watching. You are awesome. Make sure to like us on Facebook and backslash join us on the couch. As always, we love you. And let's have a great seventh season together. Bye, Nikki. Bye. Bye. See you soon.